What is up, everybody? It's Cody with Blood Money MMA Bets, and I'm back with another full card breakdown. This is for UFC Noche Noche UFC Grasso versus Shevchenko 2. It's a pretty good fight card. Um, it's got some decent uh names on the main card, and it's got some pretty good scraps on the on the prelims. It's gonna have some violence. Um, I really do like a couple spots on this card. Super tired, man, after working about 11 hours today. So I might, my brain might be a little off on this, but I'm still getting used to going back to work and working all day and being tired, getting up at three in the morning. But um, everybody, man, please like, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, drop your boy a comment to help the algorithm out. Um, Layer Cake Discord is free. The link's going to be in the description, man. There's people in there with NFL bets, stocks, MMA bets, talking during the fights, everything, man. If you want to join that, it's free. Layer Cake Discord or Layer Cake Patreon is 10 bucks a month. If you want to get into that, you're going to get all the extra content that I have. Uh, bets as soon as I make them. Layer Cake Parlay, which is one three weeks in a row. It's up like 12 units over the last three weeks. Um, you're going to get my 10 best bets in order of confidence, draft king lineup, all kinds of extra stuff, man. Um, like this week, we killed some line movement on all three bets actually that we made. So, uh, so far, I, I got three out of five. But, um, yeah, if you want to join that, the link's in the description. You'll get a bunch of extra stuff. It's just a way to support my channel. If you want to help out and, and find a way to help support my channel, that's the best way. Um, contest winner, Justin Pettigrew, hit the three-fight parlay to win the four cards. He had Chepe, Ulberg, and Malarkey. Kept it pretty simple, even through the big dog in there. Um, he was actually the only one that hit the three-fight parlay, so good for him. Um, hit me up on my Twitter, Instagram, and my messages, and um, I'll send them out to you, Justin. Good job on that. And my boy, Chef Mikey, won the Layer Cake Discord uh, giveaway, which is another Tom Aspinall autograph rookie. So there's all kinds of benefits on being all the, in all this stuff. So um, my boy, Chef Mikey, won that. Congratulations. I will get that shipped out tomorrow. Appreciate everybody that uh, participated in that and made it a fun time. Um, let's uh, let's do a quick recap of UFC uh, 293, and then we'll get right into this uh, Noche UFC. UFC 293 was terrible for me, man. Went one and four on my bets for minus 8.55 units. My one winning bet was Chepe Mariscal, uh, plus 3.5 units. Had him as a big underdog. I really liked hitting that. First losing bet was Anton Tricali, man. He did not. He just ate all the strikes with his face and, and got beat up in uh, minus 2.4 units on that. Bad bet. And then my next three losing bets were all unders, and every single one of these fights had a knockdown, a fight-ending sequence in the first round, and it just did not follow through. Cap, Manal Cap under 2.5 rounds, minus 360, and I don't know how Dos Santos took all the shots. Cop hit him with everything but the kitchen sink and even dropped him in the first round and could not get that kid out of there. Volkov under one and a half, one point five rounds, man, and he got him out of there about two minutes after that. But um, had him hurt really bad in the first round, dropped him, and then almost finished him at the end of the round. And then second round, you know, took him to the ground. It was oh well, just got on top of him and ended up burning some of my clock off. And my fourth under loss was Sean Strickland versus Izzy, and we seen Strickland. It wasn't the way I thought it was going to go down, but drop Izzy bad and then jump on him for the finish, but just could not get it done, man. So. uh yeah, man, uh, one and four for minus 8.55 units. It's my first losing week in six weeks. Uh, I've won 13 out of 16, which is 3.25 mo uh, months out of four months. You know, I won 13 out of 16, and that's that's pretty tough to do. So I'm going to get back on the winning track. I already got some good bets in for this week, and um, we're going to add to that total that we're already up still about 30 or 27, 28 units, something like that, maybe even 30 units, and then still up well over 100 units. So we're going to add to that this week and next week, and I'll get all of that back. But now what we're going to do is we're going to get into Noche UFC, which is going to be a good one, man. It's good. Like I said, it's got some good fights on it. It's got some, uh, some decent bangers, especially that main card, but then it's also got a on a low level talent on the prelims you got a guy that hasn't fought in six years you got um a dude that's zero and four with four finished losses in the ufc and getting a fight but the first fight we're going to go over is in the women's strawweight division we got josephine knutson versus marnik man uh josephine is six and oh currently sitting at minus 450 she's 27 years old five foot three with the 60 inch reach marnik is six and one 
uh, 30 years old, five foot with the 64 inch reach. So you see uh, Josephine's gonna be three inches taller, but Marnik's gonna have four inches of reach. Josephine Knutson, she's got good striking, man. She's got good kickboxing and Muay Thai. She's got pro experience in both. She's got excellent boxing, man. Really, really crisp hands. Um, she's got a strong clinch, strong clinch knees. You've seen against uh, Isis for Beck. Um, was able to control her in the clinch and, and beat her up with knees. But, you know, Dana White didn't really like that too much. But she also rocked her in the first round with that head kick, which was super nice. But uh, she's very active on um, on 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 offense and defensive and on jujitsu. If she's on top, she's going to be looking for submissions. She really doesn't have very many, but she does have good ground and pound. Um, I do like a lot of stuff about her game. She's very she's very physical. She's got excellent cardio. Um, her grappling bull. Uh, offensively and de defensively wrestling and bjj looks good and then her striking is excellent um she does have a lot of decision wins you know she's she's only got one finish with five decisions but she had uh isis for back hurt and she really beats girls up you know her her opponent marnik man she, you've seen her on the contender series get knocked out by bruna brazil but um she was getting because she landed a couple takedowns and stuff before that but she's got decent wrestling She's got um, good ground and pound when she can get on top. She's got good control. She's pretty heavy on top. She seems pretty physically strong, too. When she grabs girls, she's able to drag them to the ground. Um, okay, power in her southpaw boxing. I did see her knock out one girl, but that girl was super low level. Her boxing's kind of slow, though. But um, she's got a decent head and arm throw, like most girls. And then she's got some decent body lock trips and um, good cardio, good toughness, you know, unless she's getting kicked in the head. This should be a good fight. It's basically going to be striker versus grappler, but the striker, I think, has good enough grappling to keep it standing where she's going to beat up Marnik, man. I actually think Josephine gets a finish in this fight. I, I don't. I think Marnik, man, striking so far behind Josephine's that um, Josephine's going to be able to keep this fight standing. And from there, I think she's going to be able to land some big shots, maybe a spinning back fist, maybe a nice left head kick like she hit Isis with. But it's going to be a good fight. But it, well, I, I think Josephine finishes it, though, to be honest. Next fight is in the women's strawweight division. We got Lupito Godinez versus Elise Reed. The fight nobody knew they wanted to see. Lupita is 10 and 3, currently sitting at minus 450. She's uh five foot two with the 61 inch reach. Elise Reed is seven and three. She's uh currently sitting at plus 340. She's five foot three with the 63 inch reach. So you see, uh Reed's gonna be an inch taller with two inches of reach. Lupita Godinez, man, excellent wrestling. Excellent BJJ on top. Good transitions. You've seen like in the fight versus Ari, Ariani Carnelosi where she was just able to work all, any any transition she wanted. Landed a lot of ground upon, worked a lot of submissions. You've seen she was able to take Loma Luke Boomy down a couple times and win that fight. And that was a very tough fight because Loma's tough. She's got that win over Gomez, which is aging really well. She was able to take Silva, uh, Silvana Gomez Juarez down a couple times and then armbar her in the first round. But she's got pretty good uh, jujitsu. You see she's not getting very many finishes. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of her last eleven fights have gone to decision. But she's pretty well rounded, and her boxing looked really well, really good against uh, and improved against Emily Dakota, who has really good boxing, and she was piecing her up in the boxing and didn't even barely have to use her wrestling in that fight. Um, Elise Reed, good Taekwondo background. She's got pretty decent um, boxing. She's got pretty decent pop in her punches. She's got decent head kicks. You've seen her hit Melissa Mar uh, Rodriguez with that. Um, Good cardio, good striking cardio anyways. When she grapples, that's her kryptonite. She doesn't have the best takedown defense, and it seems like when she has to grapple, she really slows down. Uh, you've seen against um, Sam Hughes. Sam Hughes was able to uh, grapple her, take her down, and then finish her by that second round. That, or third round, sorry. Then you've seen uh, Loma Luke Boomy was able to take her down in that second round and just choke her out like shortly after. She broke her nose before that, so I guess that's one thing. But, um, yeah, man, Sajara Eubanks, up a weight class. She came in on short notice and was taken down and beaten up. And, uh, yeah, man, I think Lupi, Lupita has the um, striking to stand with Elise Reed and be just fine, hit her with some big shots, possibly break her nose again. And she definitely is going to have the grappling advantage. And I actually think that Lupita Godinez is going to finish Elise Reed. If you see Elise Reed has three losses, all three finish losses, two KO, one uh, submission. She's one of them good hammers in, in a bad nail, man. She'll be talking shit, doing all this, bouncing around when she's winning. And when she's losing, she seems to be giving up in that second or third round. So give me Lapita Godinez. I think the work that she was doing on Ariana Car Carnelosi would put uh, Elise Reed out. I think Carnelosi survived a lot of submissions because she has decent BJJ. I don't think Elise Reed has any BJJ coming from her Taekwondo background for her whole life.
Next fight is in the men's middleweight division. We got Roman Kapilov versus Josh Frem. Roman Kapilov is 11 and 2, currently, uh, currently sitting at minus 280. He's six foot tall with a 75 inch reach. Josh Frem does 11 and 4, currently sitting at plus 210. He's six foot four with a 76 inch reach. So you see, Frem's going to be four inches taller, but only one inch of reach. Roman Kapilov is a southpaw assassin kickboxer, man. His, his leg kicks are phenomenal with both legs. His straight left on the pipe is freaking crazy. Like his left head kick like that. And he's even got a nice lead lead head kick. But you seen the head kick that he knocked out. Um uh what the, what was the last my bad. What was the last guy? Uh the the big dude, Claudio Rivera, hit him with that head kick early on in the second after taking a couple of decent punches. But you've seen him against Puli Puna Haley Soriano. He was able to stop takedowns that Puna was trying to shoot after he was beating up Puna, and then Puna was trying to shoot. And he's actually got a, a high school wrestling background, um, and he wasn't able to take down uh, Kapilov at all, and Kapilov destroyed him. And then he got that knockout win over Lesio and DiCirico. Um, Looked better. He 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 knocked down Albert Duryev in that fight and then was taken down um, – he got beat in that one, but he's looked so much better, man. That's been uh, going on two years ago, and he's just looked so much better. After that fight, um, he's been training in Dagestan. So you got this kickboxer who's got phenomenal kickboxing, master of sport in Russia, and he went to Dagestan to get to improve his wrestling. I really like this kid. Josh Fram, on the other hand, no uh, combat background until he started fighting, no wrestling or nothing like that. But he's got decent striking, man. He's got decent kickboxing. He's got pretty nice leg kicks with some power. He's got long front kicks up the middle because he's super tall and long. Good boxing with some pop, but he's like he's a little slow. He's got decent jujitsu, pretty decent scrambles. I mean, his offensive jujitsu doesn't seem all that great, but he, he can definitely stay safe. You see him like with against Anthony Hernandez, but he did not stay safe against Treshawn Gore. Looked decent against Cedric Dumas, which is you know whatever, and then had that tough fight with Jamie Pickett. Um, Josh Fram couldn't even take Jamie Pickett down. He reversed him a couple times, but man, uh, he looked bad in that fight. He's going to get knocked out here. Roman Kapilov is too technical, too smooth, and too fast. Josh Fram's decent everywhere, but he's slow, man. I think that Kapilov is going to take advantage of that, and I think he could finish him with either head kick, a body kick, or that straight left. Some, something's going to get him, though. But um, I'm really, really high on Roman Kapilov. I put in my first five-unit max bet on him, and um, got him at minus... 260, and I really like that bet. I think that pays out pretty easy. Uh, next fight is in the men's lightweight division. We got Charlie Campbell versus the return of Alex Reyes. Charlie Campbell is seven and two, currently sitting at minus 400. He's six foot with a 72.5 inch reach. Alex Reyes is 13 and three, currently sitting at plus 300. He's uh, 5'11 with a 73 inch reach. So you see that uh, Charlie Campbell is going to have one inch of height. And then uh, Reyes will have a half an inch of reach. Charlie Campbell, if you've seen him on the uh, Contender Series, this kid's boxing is phenomenal. He throws heat. He's got excellent left hand, right hand. He's got excellent uppercuts from either hand. Seems to have pretty good uh, offensive wrestling and jiu-jitsu. He's training with Longo and Weidman MMA. Trains with uh, Aljamain Sterling all the time. I like this kid's boxing, man. He's got a really, really, really powerful right hand. Uh, excellent left hook, excellent straight right to left hook combo. Um, that's what I watched him knock out this Strecker dude with. Man, he's got phenomenal. And then them uppercuts that he was hitting Chris Duncan with. Chris Duncan just was super durable in that fight because he hit him with everything. But a powerful leg and body kicks. This kid seems really well rounded, really tough, really fast, and really technical in the striking. And um, yeah, if he would have got that win on the contender series, he would have came into the UFC with some hype. But he went out, out of the UFC, got him another knockout win. He's coming to fight Alex Reyes, who's Dominic Reyes's brother. This kid has not fought in six years. He's 36 years old now. Um, he's finished all 13 of his wins, which is which is pretty nice. Decent um, submissions and decent knockouts. Uh, nine KL, four submissions. But if you look here, uh, four of his last five wins were by submission. So he's getting a little better uh, towards the end. Towards the end of his career of fights before he came back, you know, but I mean, he has, he was fighting kind of lower level competition, but he does have good striking. It's super fast. He's got good boxing, throws powerful leg kicks, excellent clinch knees. Um, he kind of got in the clinch knee war with Mike Perry and got knocked out, but he was coming up to 170 and he's a 155 where he fought Mike Perry on short notice. But he's got a pretty decent offensive and de defensive BJJ. Like I said, he had them subs. Um, pretty tough and, and pretty good cardio, man. But uh, 
this is going to be a tough fight because he hasn't fought in six years and he's going to come back against a guy like Charlie Campbell that starts really fast and is really technical and is just going to start putting them hands on him right away. And I just think Charlie Campbell is going to be able to um, overwhelm him and get Alex Reyes out of there and give him another knockout loss. So give me Charlie Campbell. I'm going to say even by first round knockout, man, I'm going to say these guys start going at it. I'm going to say Charlie Campbell goes at Alex Reyes and knocks the rust off him, you know, with a, a nice right hand, maybe even that right uppercut. Um, next fight is in the men's flyweight division. We got Edgar Chárez versus Daniel Lerceda. Uh Chárez is ten and five. He's currently sitting at minus two twenty five, five point seven with the seventy two inch reach. Daniel Lacerda is eleven and five, currently sitting at plus one eighty five. He's five foot six with the seventy inch reach. So you see, Chárez is going to have one inch of height and two inches of reach. Edgar Chárez, man, tough Mexican fighter, nicknamed Pitbull. He's got really nice boxing. He's got a really crispy jab. You've seen that against Ta Tatsuro Tayara, and you've seen it against Clayton Carpenter on the Contender Series. Excellent left hook too. That's what he dropped Tayara with. Um, powerful leg kicks, powerful long front kicks to the body and to the face. He's got really good BJJ. I mean, he's got bad defensive wrestling, but he's got pretty good BJJ. His only problem is he likes to freaking uh, pull guard going for that guillotine, which almost worked out for me. Almost, If he would have had 15 more seconds, he would have submitted Tatsuro Tahara on that third round. But um, really, really nice lead left hook. Really nice right hand. Um, he's just a tough fighter. You know, he's not really great anywhere, but he's pretty much good everywhere other than defensive wrestling. Daniel Lacerda, 0-4 in the UFC with four finish losses and back again. And that is because this kid's exciting, man. He's got a, a wild, crazy style. He's going to get CJ Vergara, hit him with a couple spinning wheel kicks, chased him around the ring for about 20 or for about like a minute and a half, just hitting him with big shots and was not able to get him out of there. And that's like the, the story of his career in the UFC. He could he hit Vergara with some big shots, couldn't get him out of there, gassed out. Hey, Victor Murano dropped him, hit him with some really good shots. Nice straight left, man, that has some speed and power, but just could not get him out of there. And Jeff Molina. Took him down, beat him up, um, won the whole first round, came out in the second round. It was just a whole different fighter. But this kid's super dangerous, man. All his kicks are with power. All his punches are with power. He's super fast, super explosive, and he goes really, really hard in the first round. He's just super dangerous, and that's a super dangerous guy to fight. I'm going to take Edgar Chara's here just because I think that he's going to be – he seems super tough, super durable. But I would not bet this fight at all. I'd bet the under, but, I mean, I'm sure that's juice to the gills. But – um. I'm going to say Edgar Chavez is able to survive a tough first round where maybe he gets hurt, maybe he gets dropped, maybe he gets taken down after survive some tough spots. But if he survives against Tatsuro on the ground, he's going to survive against Lacerda, and then eventually he's going to take over and get the finish win. I'm going to say he gets it in the second round um, before that 1.5. Lacerda, I, I, I say he gets it done before the 1.5. Next fight is going to be a re really good fight. It's in the women's strawweight or women's flyweight division. We got Tracy Cortez versus ja Jasmine Jazz Dervicious. Jasmine Jazz Dervicious. I don't know why I was saying it good the other day. And now I'm not. Tracy Cortez is 10 and 1, currently sitting at, she's about minus 110 right now. So pick them. She's 5'5 five five with a 65.5 inch reach. Jasmine Jazz Dervicious. <laughs> Is nine and two currently sitting at minus one ten. She's thirty four. She's five foot seven with a sixty eight inch reach. So you see, Jasmine's going to be two inches taller with two and a half inches of reach. Tracy Cortez has good wrestling, good offensive wrestling. She has really good jujitsu, really good top control, really good ground and pound. She has improved boxing, but it's still not that good. It's it's slow. She has slow kicks. She throws leg kicks and body kicks. She don't set them up, and she gets punched right in the face. Like her striking's not really that good at all. Even Melissa Gatto was tearing her up in the striking. Justin Kish was tearing her up in the striking. Uh, Edgar was just happy to go to the ground with her the whole time, so she didn't really care. Sorry, I'm so thirsty from being in the heat all day at work, man. But yeah, um, Chase Cortez, she's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Right, like I said, grappler. She's got big, good wrestling. Her problem is she slows down a little bit. And all the fights that I was watching in the second round, she slows down against Kish. She slowed down, couldn't land no takedowns. And that's why um, in the second, third, that's why Kish was able to get it to a split decision against Melissa Gatto. She slowed down in the second round. Gatto won that round, was able to take her down a couple times, control her, and then she landed the takedown in the third and got the win. But I think she slows down. Her striking is not all that good. Jasmine, man, is a she's a junkyard dog for a girl, to be honest. Um, she's got really good wrestling. She wrestled for uh, Team Canada, like nationals and stuff like that. Um, good boxing. Like she's got better boxing and striking than Tracy Cortez, in my opinion. Uh, she looked really good against Miranda Maverick. Then her wrestling, man, is 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 what's 
really going to pay dividends. Her wrestling and her clinch. She's got a strong clinch. She can hold girls up against the cage and hit them with knees. And I think she's going to be able to do that to uh, Cortez. She's got really good defensive wrestling. She's got good fast hips. You see, against Miranda Maverick, um, she was able to take her down, reverse her, beat her up. Really good ground and pound. Excuse me, super tough and super durable. Even her fight with Gabriela Fernandez. I mean, Fernandez is a striker, but uh, Jasmine looked really tough, man, taking her down, beating her up, and almost finished her a couple times on the ground. I was really, excuse me, I'm sorry. I was, I've was i been really impressed with these girls' last, or uh, with Jasmine's last two wins. And her only loss, man, was to Natalia Silva, which is forgivable because Natalia Silva might be a champ here soon. So this is going to be a really good fight. I'm taking Jasmine to win it, though, man. I think the first round could be tough, uh, back and forth, some grappling and stuff like that. And maybe Trace Cortez can win it, but I don't think so. I think Jasmine's going to have the outright better wrestling. I think she's going to be bigger. I think she's going to be more physical, and I think she has a better striking. She may be even able to use her wrestling to keep the standing where she can beat up Trace Cortez. Trace Cortez is slow striking, and like I said, she has no striking defense. She throws leg kicks and just has her hands down and eats one twos right down the middle and stuff. And I think Jasmine's going to be the one to win it here. I think, and then Jasmine maybe later on can land her own takedowns and get on top and beat on Cortez. But I, I, I like Jasmine here. I like her size. I like her tenacity. Um, she's an underdog at one point. I like to get me a dog with some, with, with an underdog with some dog in them, just like uh, my boy Chepe. So I like Jasmine in that fight a lot. And I know it's a pick them now. So um should be, still be a good fight. Next fight is in the men's bantamweight division. We got Raul Rosa versus Terrence Mitchell. Mitchell. Raul Rosa Jr. is 7-1, currently sitting at minus 550. 5'9 with a 67-inch reach. Terrence Mitchell is 14-3, currently sitting at plus 400. He's 5'10, reach not available. Raul Rosa Jr., the 18-year-old phenom. This kid has phenomenal wrestling. Phenomenal jiu-jitsu. It looks like he has decent striking, but he's just like too scared to use it. Or I don't know what his deal is with that because he just crazy chain wrestles. But um, excellent wrestling, excellent control, excellent jiu-jitsu, really good ground and pound, and excellent subs. Um, We don't really know how good his striking is because, like I said, it seems like he has decent striking, but he's just scared to use it. But he's a young kid. He wants to go out there and run through everybody, and it just did not work in his last fight against uh, Rodriguez. But, man, I think he can come back and definitely have a good fight here. Terrence Mitchell coming out of the Alaska FC fight scene. Um, decent striking. He's fast. He actually, he actually, and he starts really fast, actually. But um, his decent striking, he's he's hittable himself, but he'll throw some heat, man. Got a nice head kick. Got, got nice power in both of his punches. Um, decent offensive and defensive wrestling. He's got okay jiu-jitsu. But, um... I don't know if he's UFC quality, man. You see, you you seen him against Cameron Sumrall, and he came out and actually landed a takedown or two right away. Got a little bit of control time, but he went so hard, and then he gassed out within two minutes, and then Simone was able to get him out of there within the next minute. So I don't know if this guy's UFC quality, and I, I definitely think that the UFC is not trying to build up Terrence Mitchell. So I'm gonna in 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 his jujitsu just looked kind of bad, at, like I said after two minutes. So I'm gonna take Raul Rosas Jr. by first round submission. I'm gonna say that um. They have a little back and forth because Terrence Mitchell's strong at first for like the first two minutes. He might even um, stop Rosas takedown, land a takedown of his own or land some big shots. But as soon as Rosas gets him on the ground, gets him under control, he's going to put this kid out. Next fight is in the men's bantamweight division. Or I mean, sorry, featherweight division. We've got Fernando Padilla versus Kyle Nelson. Fernando's 15-4, and four, currently sitting at minus 250, 6'1 with a 76-inch reach. Kyle Nelson is 14-5-1, and one, currently sitting at plus 205. He's 5'11 with a 71-inch reach. So you see Padilla is going to be 2 inches taller with 5 inches of reach. Fernando Padilla, man, this kid's got good boxing. He's got really long arms, a uh, really, really good, solid jab that he just busts dudes' face-ups uh, Hitting him with it, um, using it he from range. He's he's really good with it. He's really good with the one two. Starts off as as uh, jab will start off, you know, a four or five punch combination. But he likes to start from the one two and just work from there. Good jab, to left hook to straight right combo. Really good forward pressure. He's he doesn't have any good takedown defense or takedowns, but he's got good jujitsu. He's tenth planet guy. Um, he's got some submissions. You see, he's got eight submission win and five KOs. He seems like more of a striker, but he's actually more of a grappler. That's just learned to strike really really well. Well, kid is super tough. He's never been finished in his four losses. Um, hasn't fought the highest competition, but you seen him get that knockout over uh, um, Julian Arosa, man, where he was able to just touch him a couple times, hurt him bad, and get him out of there in the first round. His his opponent, Kyle Nelson, 
He's been in the UFC for a little while. He's went from fighting up at 140 or 155 and, and back down to 145. And, and he's gone back up and down a bunch of times. Um, but uh, he's a decent, well-rounded fighter. He's got decent Muay Thai striking. He's got pretty powerful leg kicks. You see him against Jai Herbert. Um, strong clinch against the cage. He was able to hold Jai Herbert up against the cage for a long time. That was a pretty close fight at 155. Um, very physically strong. If he can, he he doesn't really have good wrestling, but if he can get you down, then he has good ground and pound and good top control. But he's more um with most guys, just holding him against the cage, landing some good knees. Um, he's got a decent jab and he's got good power in his right hand. Uh, you see him against Polo Reyes when he was able to take off on him and punch him out quick. But uh, yeah, I don't know. He's just I don't I don't I don't know where he's gonna win it here, other than just holding uh Padilla up against the cage. Because if he takes him down, I think Padilla has a good chance to submit him. And he really does have long legs and really sneaky jujitsu if you watch some of his regional stuff. And then he's got the good boxing man that could make uh Kyle Nelson pressure shoot and then him get a submission. So I'm gonna take Padilla. Um I'm going to say third round or decision because Kyle Nelson has been finished in the third round a couple times. I know Matt sales got him. I know that, uh, um, Diego Ferrer got him in second, but Matt sales got him in the third. Billy Quarantillo got him in the third. So give me third round or, or decision. Um, maybe just accumulation of, of punches or just a club and sub in that third round for Padilla. Next fight is in the men's lightweight division. We got Daniel Zell Huber versus Christos Giagos. Daniel Zell Huber is 13 and one currently sitting at minus two fifty. Six foot one with the 77 inch reach. Jagos is 20 and 10, currently sitting at plus 205. He's five foot 10 with the 71.5 inch reach. So you see right there, uh, Zahuber's three inches taller, but he's going to have six and a uh, five and a half inches of reach. Daniel Zahuber, man, it's, it's hard to get a read on this kid. Like he seems really good on the all contender series. He looked great against Lucas Almeida. Well, he took a beating in the first round and then came back to get that win, but then comes to the UFC and fights terrible against Trey Ogden. Barely puts out any any volume um, and just gets leg kicked and just kind of, you know, stands there, stares at Trey Ogden and loses. And then has a good fight with Lando Venata. Um, dropped him in the first round, almost finished him, uh, hit him with like 200 punches. I don't know why he didn't gas himself out. And then fought, you know, a pretty tough fight the rest of the fight. But the kid's good. He seems very well-rounded. He's long. He's tall. He's got very, very, very technical striking. He's got super powerful leg kicks. KO power in the right hand. That's what he dropped Bonato with. Hurt him bad. He's got excellent flying knees, too. Um, I just I like this kid. I like his front kicks. I just want to see the volume, and I want to see some consistency out of here. And this is a pretty good matchup for him. But um, Jagos is dangerous, man. This guy can, can knock you out standing up. He's got good wrestling. He's got good jujitsu. Um, nice right hand. You've seen him in the left hook. Got Ricky Glenn out there with the left hook. But um, he's got good jujitsu. You've seen him with the Sean, Sean Suriano. He was kind of getting beat up in the stand up in that fight. And then he was able to hit that Darce choke early in the second. But um, he's had some tough losses. He fought Armand Sarukian, got uh, left hooked and ground and, ground and pound strikes. Sarukian's a beast. Tiago Moises took his back and choked him out. That's usually the way to beat him. He doesn't get knocked out all that much. Rear naked choked out, but he doesn't really just get TKO'd all that much. But he's a well-rounded fighter. He's got decent cardio. Um, he's pretty tough, and he's a gamer. This is going to be a good fight. Uh, I'm not that uh, – I'm going to take Zell Huber. I'm going to actually take him by decision, but I'm not that confident because this could be another fight just like freaking um, Bahamandas where we think Zell Huber's got this great takedown defense and this and that because he's never – he hasn't really been taken down, but nobody's really tried. Lando Venata doesn't have the best wrestling in the world. Trey Ogden didn't even try, and Lucas Amaito is a, a, a Muay Thai guy. So Chris Solskjaer can come out and start getting his wrestling going. He can easily win this fight. I mean, he can take down and control Daniel Zell Huber, take all his weapons away, because Zell Huber's a striker, man. So um, give me Zell Huber by decision, but I, I'm not confident in that, in that at all, because I would not want to bet him and then see Giagos come out and start taking him down, take his back, hold him down, possibly even get a submission. So I don't know, man. Oh, main event. This is going to be a banger. We got Kevin Holland versus Jack Della Maddalena. Kevin Holland is 25 and 9, currently sitting at um plus 120, actually. Six foot three with the 81 inch reach. Jack Della is 15 and 2. He's currently sitting at minus 140. He's 27 years old, five foot eleven with the 73 inch reach. So you see, uh Kevin Holland is going to have four inches of height and eight inches of reach. Kevin Holland, man, excellent boxing. He'll throw some kicks, but he's more of a boxer. He's just going to throw heavy, heavy hands. He's fast. He's very, very accurate. 
KO power in his left hook, KO power in his straight right down the pipe. That's what he hit uh, a Yoquan Buckley with. He's got a decent kick game, but he doesn't use it all that much, but he can. He had threw a couple of decent leg kicks against Santiago Ponzinibbio. Um, his defensive wrestling is looking better, especially at 170 where he's the bigger guy. Looked good against Chiesa. Um, he was able to, you know, he got taken down like once or twice, hopped right back up, was able to land a big knee on Chiesa and then got him in a Darce choke. And um, he's just a well-rounded fighter. He's fought very, very, very good competition in his career. You know, he's fought Jakar Souza. Um, Jacare, I said Jakar last time. It's Jacare. <laughs> I'm stupid. But uh, uh, Darren Stewart, jo Joe Quinn Buckley. But if you even go back, Brandon Allen, Gerard Marshart, he's fought uh, Derek Brunson, Marvin Vittori. Man, he's fought a lot of really, really good guys. Hamzat Shemaev, Stephen Thompson. He's well-rounded. Um, and he's got power at 170. He's got superpower, and he's very, very, very durable. The guy's never been knocked out, and he's took some really big shots. Jack Della, man, this dude looks good. His boxing's phenomenal. He can switch stances and keep the power in both hands from each stance. Um, throws decent, powerful leg kicks. I was actually shocked going back and looking at a couple of the fights because I just remembered the boxing, but he actually does have good leg kicks. Um, keeps power when switching stance. Uh, works the body well with hook combos man he'll go two to the body and come up to the head throw uppercuts from it everything man um boxing's phenomenal hey he's got a judo background but his takedown defense doesn't look the best in the world but it doesn't look the worst because i mean his last fight against uh Basil, Basil, that dude man shot 20 takedowns and he stopped like 16 of the 20 or 17 of the 20 so that 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 kind of looked like he didn't have that good takedown defense. But, man, that dude, Hafez, was tough as hell, man. I can't wait to see that dude fight again coming up. But basically, Jack Dele, you know, he's a boxer, and he's going to throw some leg kicks, and he wants to go out there and outbox you. Um, But in this one, man, if you're just going to be boxing and doing all that, I'm going to actually want to go with Kevin Holland because he's got an 8-inch reach. He hits super hard, too. He's super durable. And um, he was gonna he's going to have the grappling advantage, in my opinion, if it does go to the ground. like Jack, It's not like Jack Dell is bad on the ground. It's just that I think Kevin Holland's black belt is going to be a little bit better. And I like his size advantage. And if this just stays striking and you got, you're got you going to be boxing, basically, why not take the guy with the uh, way more uh, UFC experience and the eight-inch reach? So give me Kevin Holland. I actually say he's going to get it done by decision, man. If Jack Dell went to decision with uh, Ange Luz and Kevin Holland, neither one of the neither Either one of these guys have been knocked out. I know Jack Dell has been finished, but I think it was all subs, right? No, he does have one KO loss. His first fight, he got uh, knocked out. But other than that, man, this dude's been a durable mofo. So um, give me Kevin Holland. Not really all that confident. You know, it's going to be a really good fight. That might be one you can just watch as a fan. But if that line keeps going up on Holland, I'll have to take me a stab at it. Main event time, Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko to Alexa Grasso is 16-3. Currently sitting at plus 135. She's five foot five with a 66 inch reach. Valentina is 23 and four. Currently sitting at minus 160. <coughs> Excuse me. She's uh five foot five with the 66, 65.5 inch reach. Heights all the same, 0.5 inch reach for Grasso. Grasso, um, phenomenal boxing. Her boxing is phenomenal. She can switch stances. I didn't notice that until I watched her do it more in the Shevchenko fight, but she kept switching stances going to a southpaw and landed some really big punches with that right hand. But she's got a powerful right hand, improved wrestling in BJJ. She got taken down a couple times by Shevchenko, but she was able to work her way back up. Um, and then she showed really good jujitsu against Joanne Wood. She, she looked good against Macy Barber. Vivian Arujo was able to strike with her for five rounds. She's got nice leg kicks. Um, throws really good combos, three, four, five punch combinations with power in both hands. Uh, at least stinging, stinging power. She stung Shevchenko a couple times in that fight. And her jujitsu, her rear naked choke's crazy, man. I rewatched the Joanne Wood fight. She did the same thing to Joanne Wood that she did to Shevchenko. She took Wood's back for four seconds. Put in the rear naked choke. It wasn't even all the way in. And she just squeezes so hard. that Dude, when she let go on Joanne Wood, her face was all white right there, too, just like she did to Shevchenko. So this girl has a squeeze on her. She's 30 years old. She's going to be getting stronger, going to be getting better as a champ and improve. And then you got Valentina Shevchenko. Uh, 35 years old. She's getting older, man. She She's getting older and it's showing. I don't think she's as muscular as she used to be. Her thighs aren't near as muscular as she was against. Uh, if you go watch and look at her fight, Caitlin Chukagian in 2020, her, her shape was so much better. She looked, you know, like a eight pack, all that stuff. And she's just getting older now. She's 35 years old. She must be losing some bone density or something because in her last couple of fights, she's not looked the best, man. Um, she's got phenomenal Muay Thai. 
She's got phenomenal offensive wrestling. She's got excellent jujitsu, excellent transitions. She gets in the crucifix. She pounds girls out. She's got good submissions, um, excellent spinning kicks, but I don't know if she's going to want to do that in this fight again after what happened last time. Last time. But if she's got a really good jab. She's got a nice straight left. Man, their southpaw kickboxing Muay Thai is phenomenal. She's one of the most well-rounded women that's ever fought in the game. But in her fight against Talia Santos, she got out-wrestled by Talia Santos for the first three rounds. I thought she lost that fight. And then against Alexa Grasso in that fight, I had it. I had Grasso win in the first round. She stung um, uh, Shevchenko in the first round, then Shevchenko in the second and third. And then the fourth, Shevchenko couldn't land a takedown. She was slowing down, wasn't landing the takedowns. And Grasso was having um, uh, success with the striking, right? And then she, she missed a spinning kick, and Grasso took her back with one minute left in the round. And even if she wouldn't have submitted her, she would have took the back, had her in a bad spot. That would have got, it would have been 2 2 going into the fifth round. Um, and then, you know, I think that Grasso had the momentum going there. She was landing the bigger shots, and I had a bet on Shevchenko last time. And, like, every time she got the tank takedown, I'm like, yes. And I've never felt that way with Shevchenko, but I felt like she needed it. In this fight, I think like I think that Alexa Grasso, like I said, she's 30, Valentina's 35. Alexa's going to be the one that's in her prime, can be getting stronger and actually improving, where Shevchenko, how much improving in, is she getting? And stronger is she getting at 35? Then she's coming in here, and I think Grasso is going to be able to stop the takedowns a little more. And from there, I think she knows her striking is better, so she's going to trust it a lot in this fight. And I think Grasso is going to win. I think Grasso, I think that this is going to look more like the rematch between Leon Edwards and Usman III than um, like a big mistake where it was Matt Serra and George St. Pierre uh, two, where Matt Serra, you know, got the lucky knockout in the first one and came back and took the beating like he was supposed to. I don't think, I think Alexa Grasso, this is like a changing of the guard where it's just Shevchenko got older. I think Usman was 35 years old when this happened to him too. And um, they're just getting older. You know, she lost to Talia Santos, uh, I thought. And then now she could be on a, she could be all in two in her last two fights. And I, I don't really think she should be the favorite here. So I'm going to take Alexa Grasso. I don't think she chokes her out this time. I think that, um, I think she ends up getting a, a decision. I think it's like a 3-2 decision, you know, and I'm pretty confident on Grasso. I, I like her. Um, I think she's going to be improving and getting even better where I don't know if Shevchenko is. So I appreciate everybody watching this recording. I got this done early, quick. Um, I was tired. I'm tired. I almost didn't even do it tonight. It's going to be tough for a while uh, doing work and doing this and, and, uh, and all the tape study and all that. But I appreciate everybody that leaves the comments, that's subscribed, that's liked, that's, uh, that helps me out and just supports whenever, wherever, and um, comes on the live shows and talks and everything. So appreciate everybody, man. I'll see you guys Thursday night with Johnny K. Picks and good luck.